we're going to believe God for impossible things. How many of you here, you're believing God for impossible things? Some of you, your love life needs to be restored. I'm <laughs> serious. Some of you, your marriage needs to be restored and healed. Some of you, your grades need to be restored back from the dead. Some of you, you're believing for a career promotion. Some of you are believing for healing physically. And so a lot of things, a lot of us are believing for impossible things. Am I right? And so one of the faith goals or New Year's resolutions that we need to make this year is we dare to believe. Let's believe God for impossible things. Let's ask God for impossible things. Things that sometimes you feel, wala na pagasa to. Seems that some things that you feel sometimes it's hopeless. Things you've been praying to God for and holding on to for quite some time now, for centuries, and it hasn't happened yet. But I dare us to believe. Let's believe God for impossible things. And this will be our series for the whole month of January. As we start 2016, let us start it with faith. Sabi mo sa katimo, faith. With a fist, faith. Hindi faith. I don't want us to answer someone. When someone asks you, how are you doing? Okay lang, mabait si Lord. <laughs> Still alive, praise the Lord, hallelujah. No, it seems like you're just surviving. How many of you believe this year, even though there would be a lot of problems and trials, this year would be a year of victory for us, amen. amen. This year would be a year of breakthrough for you. You come here in church every Sunday, 8 p.m., not having, okay lang, malapit na babalik si Lord, don't worry. no. It's just merely surviving. I want us to come here in 8 p.m. service with faith. Speak words of faith. Words of hope. Not just to the personal lives of people, but even in our nation. Some of us, we say negative words. Wala na. Yung mga presidente natin, yari tayo dyan. Di ba yung mga, you start saying negative words. You start, no. If you, I dare us to believe. Believe God for impossible things. Claim His promises. Confess His promises. And it would change your life. Dare us to believe. So let's change our hearts. When we go to our offices, let's change the culture. I was just reading a newspaper, an international newspaper, and some economists are saying that 2016, for some business people, you know what I'm talking about, 2016 would be a year of slow growth. Slow growth. Not, not really bad compared to 2015. It's better, but they'll say 2016 would just be a steady growth for businesses and economies of the world. I want us to understand that might be the reality, but we can still believe God for impossible things. Whatever your situation tonight, some of you came here with problems, tons of problems. Whatever your situation tonight, I dare us to believe God. Hold on to His promises, claim His promises, continue praying to Him, and believe that everything will come to pass in accordance to His will. One of the things that we need to believe God for is His deliverance. Let me be straight to the point to us. This year, 2016, would not be a perfect year. I don't think there's a, such a thing as a perfect year. I'll shortchange us guys if I say 2016 would be a perfect. No, it's not. It wouldn't be a perfect year. There will be times some of you will go through challenging season. Some of you will go through disappointments. Some of you will go through doubts and fears. So it wouldn't be a perfect year. Some of us are still going through the same problem we've been going through last year, and we're still going through it now. It's not yet done. But one of, if we believe God for bigger things, we can believe for His deliverance. Our God is a deliverer. Our God who can rescue us from what we're going through, can rescue you from disappointments. He'll rescue you from your frustrations, your fears and doubts. If you're believing God, I dare us to believe. We can believe that there can be deliverance. Not, his, not our, because of our experience, but because of who He is. I'm not telling us, believe in ourselves. That's humanistic. Ever heard that advice? Trust your heart, sis. Just believe in your heart. No, no, I don't want us to believe in our hearts because the Bible says the heart is deceitful above all things. Rather, instead of believing in our hearts, believe God with our hearts. Trust God with your heart. And we can believe Him. I'm going to share a story in Second Chronicles 20 about King Jehoshaphat who was going through a crisis. I'm sure all of us can relate. He's the king of Judah and there were three nations, three armies, 
that were about to attack his nation. So he was afraid. And he did not know what to do, but he responded well. And he believed for God's deliverance. As we look at his story, we can also apply this lesson in our lives of how do we really believe in God. Let's look at it in Second Chronicles, rather. Second Chronicles 20, verse 1. It says here, after this, the Moabites, that's the first army, and the Ammonites, that's the second one, and with some of them, the Munites, came against Jehoshaphat for battle. Now, three armies. Okay? Lugi ka na. Kasi they're just one. He's just the king of Judah, and he was going to deal with three armies. Technically, probably three nations. And in verse 2, the assistant, assistant, some men came and told Jehoshaphat, a great multitude is coming against you. A great multitude. That's how he described, that's how they described it. From Edom, from beyond the sea, and behold, they are in Hazazon Tamar. It's hard to pronounce, like Star Wars lang, ha? That is En Gedi. Hindi En Jedi, ha? En Gedi. And so, this, this is the army, a great multitude, a threat, an enemy that King Jehoshaphat was facing. What happened? In verse 3, his response is that he was afraid. I'm sure this year, 2016, will not be a perfect year for us, for me and for you. This year, we will face some enemies, for sure. This year, we will face some trials, some crisis. And there will be times you'll be afraid. There will be times you'll get scared. I need your cooperation. Honest to goodness. Last year, who among you here, at least one point in your life, you got scared? I know some people. Means I'm over eh. Nagpalpitate lang. Heart attack, heart attack. Diba? <laughs> diba? <laughs> Shocks, pimple, well, cancer, cancer. Diba? You start to exage. I told you my story when there was great turbulence in the airplane. I felt it was going to crash. I started imagining all the movies that I saw before. And I started to imagine that. Diba? What if the airplane cuts into half and I'm in the first row? Diba? It plunges. I, we have a lot of paranoia. We get scared. That's my point. And there will be times this year you'll get scared. Let me tell you, because I'm not perfect. And I'm not holier than thou. It's okay to be scared. No, I'm a man, pastor. Even men get scared. It's okay to get scared. In fact, the Bible, <laughs> there are 300 plus, if I'm not mistaken, 300 plus commandments that says, do not be afraid. All the people that God used from the beginning to end were afraid. You mga kids know this, scaredy cat. They were scared. They were afraid. Just like this man of God. King Jehoshaphat was afraid. And you'll get scared too. You will be afraid. The question is not whether you get afraid or not. That's not the question. The question is this. How do you respond when you get, when you be, when you get scared? When you're afraid, how do you respond? Because we can learn from Jehoshaphat here. He was the king of Judah and he felt this was an impossible situation. He can, he can be destroyed. They can be obliterated by these three armies. But this was his response. And I hope this will be our response. When you get scared, when you are afraid, that you would seek the Lord. And one of the expressions of them seeking the Lord is they prayed and fasted. It wasn't just an individual, but everyone. They were scared to death. And when you, here's one lesson we can learn from King Jehoshaphat as we believe God for his deliverance. That we seek the Lord when you're afraid. Who do you run to when you're scared? Who do you, this is a good question. Who do you contact first when you're scared? Do you share it to someone? Facebook contacts, I'm scared. And people will like it. Instagram, I'm scared, selfie. <laughs> Who do you share it to? Who do you run to when you're scared? It's a good question. Or how do you respond when you're scared? I'm sure a lot of us got afraid already. We're afraid last year. From the most trivial things, to cockro from cockroach, to rats, to life-threatening situations. But the good response when you're scared is that you don't have to be overwhelmed with fear. I said, Wala naman sa Ten Commandments, thou shall not be scared. 
It's okay to be scared. But the most important thing is this. When you're scared and you're afraid, how do you respond? You know our response? I hope this year this will be our response. If you agree with me, we will seek the Lord. We will pursue Him. We will run to Him when we're afraid. It's okay to run to God all the time. I run to God all the time. When I'm scared, when I'm worried, I run to God. I just pray while I'm in the car, while I'm walking from here to, the mar- to market market. When before I sleep, I get scared and I, I pray to God. Lord, what is this feeling? When my wife is asleep already and the lights are off, I pray. There are also emo moments I go through. Baka nga mas emotional pa ako sa inyo eh. But I learned to run to God. And listen, hindi na hukulitan si Lord sa inyo when you run. I'm sure some of you, you shed tears. Gallons of tears last year. And you know what? That's a good response when you cry. You cry out to God. Seek the Lord when you're afraid. Some of us, when we get overwhelmed with fear and we don't know how to respond, what happens is this. We panic and you don't know who to run to. You don't have any idea. May God pala. You, can, you don't know how to run to God. So what happens? You just don't panic. You get paralyzed. You ever saw a scene in the movie, like probably Jurassic Park, when the dinosaur is there and this man is in that scene and it gets paralyzed? We just get paralyzed when we're afraid. Or some of us, we pour our frustration to someone else. You run to him. Seek the Lord when you're afraid. It's okay to be scared. Look at the person beside you and say, you're scary. No, 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 no. Don't, it's okay to be scared. No, I'm serious. It's okay to be scared. It's okay to be afraid. I'm not going to be to show you that I'm perfect and say, napaka plastic ko naman when I say I don't get scared. No, we all get scared. We're all afraid here. But when this terror comes and strikes our heart, you know who to run to. You run to God in prayer. Let's do that this year. If that's a habit, let's do that. Don't just share it in Facebook. Because if you share it, fear is contagious. You know what I'm talking about? Fear is very contagious. It will be contagious to the people around you. Remember those? I remember, I don't, well, I wasn't a Christian back then. You know when there's a haunted house? You pass by the haunted house, just one kid gets afraid, all of you just get running. Yung contagious eh. May mumu dyan. Oh, yeah, may mumu dyan. Lahat, lahat tatakbo. You know what I'm talking about? You, know, you ever saw the video in Japanese prank? Yung there's just this man walking and then this crowd of Japanese people will run towards him. Anong ginagawa niya? Tatakbo rin siya eh, di ba? Because fear is contagious. If fear is contagious, let me tell you this. Faith in God is contagious as well. So let's live this 2016. Live out this year, 2016, that whenever you get afraid, you learn to run to God. You learn to run to God. You pray to Him. In verse 6, this was Jehoshaphat's prayer together with all the people. O God, Lord of our fathers, are you not God in heaven? You rule over all the kingdoms of the nations. In your hand, power and might, so that none is able to withstand you. So there he was praying to God. You know what he's saying here? Lord, you're more powerful. You're bigger than my fears. You're bigger than my enemies. You're bigger than my financial problems. You're bigger than my, fina- my family problems. You're bigger than my doubts. You're even bigger than my frustrating and terrible boss whom I'm going to meet tomorrow morning. You're bigger than my sales quota. I've been trying to reach the quota. Nandito pa lang ako, first gear pa lang. Can't even reach it. You're big, bigger than any of the things that I'm scared of. That's what Jehoshaphat was praying. You're big. It's a prayer of acknowledgement. And this is a good perspective when you run to God. Sometimes the vague concept of God is, I want to thank the Lord up there. You know, those people, some artists who win an award, they don't even know who God is. They just say, I want to thank the man from above. Really? 
He's not just a man from above. How many believe he's the God of the universe who's powerful and mighty, who can perform miracles after miracles on your behalf, and nothing is impossible in him? That's the God that we're serving. But sometimes we think, God is a genie too. Lord, give me this. If you give me this, I will attend 8 a.m. to 8 p.m. all the time. I won't be late anymore in the service. If you just give me this 1 million peso contract, if you help me reach my sales quota, I will involve myself to small group and ushering ministry. All the ministry, sabay sabay. <laughs> you might be manipulate. Sometimes that's not your view of God. He's not, then he's not the God of the universe. Then he's a genie. In Tagalog, pehingi no on pehingi, pehingi. It's not just a genie. Give me this, give me that. Or sometimes user friendly tayo, but we, pursue, we, we only pursue God when you have problems. But when life is happy, when life is smooth, you forget about God and go back to the world. Listen, that's not the view of Jehoshaphat because the view of Jehoshaphat is this. You are powerful, you are mighty, you are the king of kings and the lord of lords. You run my life. You run the whole universe. You're in charge of what's happening in Middle East. You're in charge of what's happening around the world. And you're going to punish and judge those terrorists. God is like that. And if he's in charge of the world, he knows what you're going through as well. This is what he said. It wasn't just a prayer of acknowledgement. But in verse 7, sabi nyo, did you not, our God, drive out the inhabitants of this land before your people, Israel, and give it forever to the descendants of Abraham, your friend? You know what he's saying here? He's talking about what God did to his ancestor, Abraham, which was like hundreds of, and thousands of years ago. So, hindi lang prayer of acknowledgement of saying, Lord, you're this God, you're this, you're that. It's not, he wasn't just acknowledging God, but also he was actually trying to remember, trying to recall all those stories that was passed from generation to generation of how God performed miracles to his ancestor, Abraham. Kaling! You know, a good prayer is when you are sad. And when you are fearful, when you're afraid, when you're in doubt, when you're worrying, try to remember all the great things that the Lord has done to you last year. How many of you the Lord has done a lot of things to you last year? Are you thankful for that? Then try to recall it. Kasi lahat tayo ulyanin eh. Yeah, we think, I'm not saying ingrata. I'm not saying ungrateful. No, we are grateful. Filipinos in general are grateful people. Thankful. They know how to thank you people, but because of life's business, because of life's overwhelming, stressful situations, we forget, we easily forget what the Lord has done. Or if we don't forget, we take it for granted. You know, when you're going through some disappointments, try to write it down again. Do you still use yellow pad or iPad or intermediate pad, whatever? Notebook, moleskin, moleskin. You try to write down all the great things so you will not forget. Because this is what Jehoshaphat did. He ran to God. He acknowledged who God was. But he said, Lord, you, you did this. You did that. And if you did that before, you can surely do it again. Prayer of remembrance. And in verse 12, Oh, our God, will you not execute judgment on them? See, I think this is a Filipino prayer. Kunin mo na sila, Lord. Yung mga kalabang ko, kunin mo na sila. That's what his prayer is all about. Kill them in short. Execute judgment. He was pouring his heart. You know, the, one of the things I love whenever I pray to God is I'm, I can be real to Him. Minsan, there are times talaga I pray for people and I really say, tell God, Lord, bad trip talaga eh. Bad trip siya. This is a bad trip siya, yabang niya. Wah, siyang demonyo. Sabihin ko talaga kay Lord. Hindi, hindi naririnig ng wife ko. <laughs> Narinig niyo na. <laughs> but I'm just being real to God. I'm pouring out my frustration. But at the end of the day, the Lord will speak to me and say, you don't say that. And then I, okay, I'm sorry, Lord. But I try to pour out my heart. That's my point. You, that's why when you pray to God, it doesn't have to be memorized prayer all the time. And let me say that again. There's nothing wrong with memorized prayer. I believe there's a venue for that. But when you pray to God at times, pray from the heart. I'm sure a lot of you, 
yung mga bad trip na sinabi ko, meron din kayong kabad trip anjan. Why don't you pour it out to God? Instead of Kim Kiming that. <laughs> Instead of, what's the English word? I'm sorry. Uh, you gotta help me. What's uh, Keeping it to yourself. Hindi ko nasabi imbibing. Right? Because you, when you run to God, you pour out your heart. If you notice psalmist, the, when you look at the Bible, if you look at the Psalms, you'll really say how David prayed. It wasn't all praise the Lord all the time. You noticed it? You haven't read the Bible yet? Okay, that's fine. When I'm talking to you, when I'm talking about the Psalms, you look at it, it wasn't just praise the Lord, hallelujah, shout to the Lord all the time. There were times they'll say that, execute judgment, kill them all. I'm afraid. Why so downcast, oh my soul? Because this is what he said. That means there's a prayer of acknowledgement. There's a prayer of remembrance. And there's also, you would see, a prayer of outpour and requesting before God. And if God doesn't give, that's fine. That means He can give it in the future or He has something better for you. Kasi minsan nagagalit tayo eh. Our expectation is on our minds eh. It's already fixed. Lord, you said you'll give me this. You'll give me this job. You'll give me this certain company. Eh, hindi mo nang binigay. Di ba yung may tampo-tampo pa kay Lord? You get frustrated. Let me tell you this. If God doesn't give it to you, probably He has something better. He has something better for us. He knows best. And, he, this, and this is a good scripture. We do not know what to do. How many of you have been in a situation you don't know what to do? Right? Lord, sasagutin ko ba siya? Babasa din ko ba siya? Hindi siya Christian eh. Pero cute siya. You don't know what to do. Or in your marriage, you're frustrated already. You don't know what to do. For some reason, your partner doesn't change. Or in your children, they're far from the Lord and you think it's hopeless. You look at them, it's hopeless. Guapo pa naman. You do not know what to do. We all go through situations and we don't know what to do. There are situations and the feeling is, I don't know what to do. But I liked it here. It did not end. The statement did not end there. It continued on. It says, but our eyes are on you. I don't know what to do. I don't know what 2016 will offer. But I'm believing, Lord, my eyes are on you. You are faithful to the very end. All your promises are yes and amen. You are Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end. You know what's best for me. We can put our faith in Him. Amen? We can put our faith in God. Come on, give Him praise. Our eyes are on you. A healthy prayer is this, acknowledging who God is. When you pray, acknowledge mo naman si Lord. Hindi naman puro. Tingin naman yan, Lord. Padulas naman ako. Damn it. Grabe naman. Then, minsan, we acknowledge Him. That's why the memorized prayer, Our Father who art in heaven, that was very helpful for us. You know that, right? You know that? Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. What's that? What does that mean? It's acknowledging who God is. You're in heaven. Your name is respected, revered. You're acknowledging who God is. When you pray, learn to acknowledge who God is. Second, remembering what God did. You try to, th- this, this can be a part of thanksgiving. Lord, thank you. Thank you for my business. Thank you for my job, even though I have a challenging boss, but yet, thank you. Thank you, Lord God, I have a job, even though the quota is hard. Thank you, Lord, I have a job. Thank you. Thank you, Lord, for the car. Thank you for, I'm able to commute. Thank you for everything. Even if you get frustrated and falling, line, falling in line in MRT, you still have something to thank God for. We still have trains. Thank God, remembering what God did. If you need to write it down, then write it down. And then the third one is asking God what He can do. It's a good prayer. That's, that's how you run to God. In times of you need deliverance from Him. Acknowledge Him, remember, ask. You know what happened? The Lord responded. When they were praying, amazing, the Lord responds. In verse 14, it says, The Spirit of the Lord came upon Jehaziel, the son of Zechariah, 
son of Beniah, son of Jael, son of Mataniah, a Levite of the sons of Asaph, in the midst of the assembly. In short, the Spirit of the, of the Lord came upon a person. And it says there, ang haba kasi. So, basta tao. The Spirit of prophecy came upon that person. The Lord responds. You know what we can learn from this scripture? When you pray to God, He listens. Some of you never prayed to God last year. You try it this year. I'm sensing some of you never prayed to God last year. All you need, all you did was Instagram. I'm serious. All you did was Facebook and like those crazy status of your friends. You never even prayed to God. But when push comes to shove, I'm telling you, <laughs> I'm telling you, this year, the going will get tough. When push comes to shove, let's see, you don't pray to God, let's see. It's hard to live life without a supernatural partner in your life. It's hard. I can't imagine an atheist living. He'll have full of eye bags just to convince himself there's no God, there's no God. Even though he's going through a lot of times, of there's no God, there's no God. You know, a lot of atheists, why they became atheists? Because of bitterness against God. There was one frustrating situation and they blamed God. Majority of the atheists are like that. But I want us this year, I want us, when you learn to trust God and pray to Him, He responds. Some of you need to hear that. You, he listens to every, he sees your tears. He even knows the number of your hair. He knows the things in your heart, the frustrations. He even listens more than your best friend does. I mean, in natin, yung mga best friends dito, there are times you no longer listen to your friend. Eh. Diba sis, ito yung ginawa niya, oh, oh. And then you just Facebook, oh, I really, oh. You no longer listen. You're just looking at the face, right? Sino dito? Ginamayan nyo na yun. You lost your, atten your attention span was so, so short. All the words that your best friend said, some of you, you forgot already. You're just looking at him. Oh, uh -huh. oh, oh, uh-huh. Oh. Kaya mo yan, girl? Listen, that's not like God. You know, when God, when you pray, even if God is busy managing the universe, and but when you pray, each one of us pray in Jesus' name, you know what he did, does? He stops his, what he's doing and he looks at you and really sees your cry. But hindi pa sinasagot ni Lord. Tanongin mo sa kanya, but pag natanong sa akin, <laughs> problema ko na ba yun? No, of course. The Lord might not answer your questions now. The Lord might not even grant your prayer request, but it doesn't mean he doesn't listen. Some of you need to hear that. He responds. In verse 15, he said, Listen, all Jew, that the spirit of prophecy came to that person. And this is what he said. The message of God flowed him, flowed in him. And it says, Listen, all Jew, the inhabitants of Jerusalem, and King Jehoshaphat, thus says the Lord to you, do not be afraid. Wow, what a message. That's what Jehoshaphat needed to hear. Do not be afraid. Because that was really the exact feeling that he was going through. I'm afraid. I'm worried. And do not be dismayed at this great horde, for the battle is not yours, but God's. You know, I'm glad that every battle that we go through is not our battle, but it is the Lord's battle. Some of us, we think we're defeated already. I want us to understand today, if you have God with you, He fights for you, and He fights with you. Sometimes we think when we go through some problems, the Lord is fighting me. Sadista si Lord. Very bad. Listen, let me tell you this. The Lord is not fighting you. He's fighting for you. And He's fighting with you. And it's not just your battle. It's His battle. And that means if it's His battle, how many of you believe victory is certain? Victory is sure. How many of you believing this year would be a year of victory for you? Amen? You will be victorious over the situations you're going through because the battle is the Lord's, not yours. He's fighting for you. He's fighting with you. What a message. Do not be afraid. And daming beses sa Bible do not be afraid. And in verse 17, this is the simple instruction. You fight them, but stand firm, hold your position, and see the salvation. That's just the simple instruction. 
You stand firm. Some of you need to hear this. You stand firm. Whatever you're going through now, don't give up. Don't backslide. Backsliding will make it worse. Not attending church will make it worse. No, you stand firm. You stand there. Even when you're in the middle of the storm, you stand in the middle of the storm because God is with you. In fact, another instruction here is not just stand firm in the middle of the storm. Some of you, last year, you've always sucked up to peer pressure. Eh, ganito talaga yung kultura sa office eh. Yeah, sexual immorality, everything. That's how the culture works in your office, in your campus. You've sucked up, you've been sucked to the culture, to the culture of the environment. No, the Bible says now you stand firm. You believe on, what you're, on whatever you're hearing today. You live out, you live by that conviction. Lahat inuuhan mo eh. Last year. I'm believing for some of you, you stand firm. Before you were the tail, now you're going to be the head. You'll no longer be pressured by people and continue to lead the, and lead them, leading you to other sinful acts. Not anymore this year. The Lord is turning that around to some of you. You're now going to be the head and they will be the tail. They will follow you because they see God in you. And I believe some of you, you will be used by God this year to bring others to Jesus Christ. Stand firm. Hold your position. Hold on to the promises of God and see the salvation. What's the response of Jehoshaphat? Bowed his head and all Judah and the inhabitants of Jerusalem fell down before the Lord, worshiping the Lord. That means you believe in the Lord when He speaks. If you want to believe God for His deliverance, that means you're going to seek Him when you're afraid Secondly, is what when he responds and tells you to do something, you believe in him and you better obey. Kasi pwede naman yung scenario parang ganito yun eh. Of course, mas marami. It's bigger. While I'm praying, Jehoshaphat was praying, and then one person from the audience says the message of the Lord, speaks the message of the Lord. We can respond, Be. Be. Nakainom lang yan. Stir. Stirer yan. So we can doubt. You can be uncertain, but they believe. They took that word of God. Do not be afraid. Do not be dismayed. You go fight them. That means there's an aspect for us this year. If you're believing God for His deliverance, you better believe His promises. You better believe His word. You know the root cause of disobedience? The root cause of disobedience is trust in the Lord. When people are having a hard time obeying God, it's simply because they don't trust God. You'll only follow the person you trust. But if there's no trust factor there, then you're not, they're going to have a hard time following God. That's why here we can le learn believe in the Lord when He speaks. What did they believe in? That they believe that they'll stand firm. And second, they will hold on to His promises. Hold on. And then the third one is to obey. And they did that. In verse 20, it says, They rose early in the morning and went out into the wilderness of Tekoa. Early in the morning. And when they went out, Jehoshaphat stood and said, They were about to face the army, followed God's, God's instruction. In verse 20, it says, Hear me, Judah, and the inhabitants of Jerusalem. Believe in the Lord your God. And you will be established. Believe his prophets and you will succeed. And when he had taken counsel with the people, he appointed those who were to sing to the Lord. And praise Him in holy attire as they went before the army and say, Give thanks to the Lord for His steadfast love endures forever. Here's the instruction. They will face the army, but it's quite unorthodox. Unorthodox in a way, yeah, they have swords and spears and shields, but the frontliners were music team, worship team. Now that's weird. No one in his right mind will ever believe that. If I'm going to fight those three armies, I want to make sure there's machine guns. There are tanks there. There's nuclear bomb, just to be sure. Right? You will fight. But why will you put a musician and worship team in front? If you face this, let's say the face of 300, that's the enemy you're going to face, and then you're going to say, give thanks. That's weird. <laughs> you'll fight with singing, not with, right? 
Pastor Miko, you know what I'm talking about? You are a UFC fan. UFC ketchup. And... <laughs> diba? If someone will fight you, you better fight as well. But them, it's different. They'll sing. <laughs> They'll sing. Diba? I'm sure if we sing this present song, Lost Me Without You. Diba? Where will I be? Diba? You're facing that. That's weird. Sorry, Lord. Da. But I know there are a lot of things that God asks us to do, and you know it's weird. It's countercultural. Tama po ba? It's countercultural. It's like people will laugh at you when you obey the Lord. Just like this one. But you know what happens when you obey the Lord? Even though sometimes it's countercultural and it's unorthodox, it's upside down. What did the Lord do in verse 22? And when they began to sing and praise, they didn't even wield their lightsabers or their laser guns. Oops, sorry, Star Wars. The Lord set an ambush against the men of Ammon, Moab, and Mount Seir who had come against Judah so that they were routed. You know what the Lord did? He sent His angels probably to kill all those armies. All they needed, all the Israelites needed to do was just to worship the Lord. They just marched and worshiped the Lord. You know, that's a good weapon for us this year. When you're going through some doubts, when you're going through some trials, you learn to worship the Lord. Do you, did you, do you buy CDs? May CD pa ba? Plaka, plaka. <laughs> you know, when you buy, buy in iTunes, some of you have been investing to some, and there's nothing wrong with it, but it's good to have a collection of praise and worship songs as well in your iTunes, in your iPhone, in your smartphones. So that when you're going through some tough times, the best weapon that we can also use is worship unto the Lord. We worship God. When you're losing your temper while you're driving in Ed, so why not worship the Lord? When you're frustrated at work, why not worship the Lord? Even though some of us, we have a terrible voice, it's okay. It's not in the voice. It's the heart. that We learn to magnify God and worship Him. If you're here in... You attend the service all the time and that's why we have praise and worship. It's good. You know why? When you're going through some problems, it's timely for us to sing the praise and worship songs because it's a weapon that we can use. It's an offensive weapon you can use so that you can throw away those disappointments and sadness that you have in your hearts and God can turn, turn things around for you. Worship Him. And what happened? They started killing each other. These three armies started killing each other. They were confused and they started killing each other. And the Israelites didn't do anything. They just sang to the Lord. They just obeyed the Lord. When victory came, when they won, what did they do? They rejoiced in the Lord. So we can learn from King Jehoshaphat, a journey of faith. Seek the Lord when you're afraid. Believe His word. When He speaks to you, you be better believe Him. And then the third one is, you worship Him. You glorify Him. You magnify Him when He answers you, when He delivers. I'm going to end here. I want to share a testimony of someone. As I end, I'm just going to read it. Okay lang, 100 pages lang naman to. But I'm just going to read this testimony because this is a testimony of someone that experienced the deliverance of God. He was going through a painful consequence because of his stupid decisions in the past, but because of God's grace, he was delivered from it. Uh, let me read it. Now I was 14, this is what he said, I was 14 when I first accepted Christ as my personal Lord and Savior through a campus outreach at Benigno High School. Since then, I became an active member in Victory. I entered college in 2005. Sadly, I easily got into a lifestyle of sexual immorality because everywhere I turned, it seemed like the norm. I got involved in ungodly relationships and had multiple sexual partners of the same sex. Thinking that having same-sex relationship would make me happy, but I ended up empty and lonely. After three years of living that way, I started to notice that I got tired, physically tired, easily. I immediately, I immediately suspected it had something to do with my lifestyle of promiscuity. So on September 11, 2008, I decided to have myself checked. Fear, anxiety, and guilt started to set in. 
And then I heard my most dreaded diagnosis. I was HIV positive. It felt like the end of the world. I was devastated. I was just in my third year in college, and I felt my life was already over. I knew once a person was found HIV positive, he is positive for life. I contemplated on ending my life because, because what was the point of living? But I couldn't bear the guilt of that as well. So instead, for the next three years, I poured my life on, on my work in the hopes of forgetting my sickness. However, several symptoms started to appear. I was very prone to respiratory diseases. About 20 boils would erupt on my skin at one time. It became very painful and I couldn't hide it anymore through painkillers. What was more painful that the physical, than the physical manifestation was the pain of having to hide the truth from my family. I was their hope for a better life. I was afraid to face the fact that I failed them. I was afraid of rejection. Another year passed before I decided to go back to church and be involved in a ministry. I joined the Sunday 2 and 4 p.m. ushering ministry. The singles from the team would go out for fun after we served together. Because of the relationships that were, that were built, I felt accepted. I knew I belonged to a family. Then my trust and confidence in them began to develop. After five long years of silence about my condition, I decided to share with them what I was going through. They did not reject me. Instead, they prayed for me. They encouraged me to not give up and keep believing God that He would heal me. Even at the back of my mind, it was impossible for my condition to get reversed. Their faith increased my faith to believe God for a miracle. Their faith in God was so strong that they encouraged me to have myself tested again. On my own, I was hesitant to do it. I did not want to hear another disappointing news. But on February 4, 2013, after five years, they took me and have myself tested. Before the results came out, I prayed to God and for, asked for His grace to accept whatever the results may be. I promised that I was going to cooperate with the doctors for proper medication. I had already wasted five years of not getting the treatment that I needed. Even if I had a, a year or two left of my life, I was going to make the best of what I, I had. In my heart, it was a battle. I wanted so much to be healed. I wanted so much to believe that nothing was impossible with God. At the same time, the enemy was telling me I deserved what I had. And waiting for the blood test result was agonizing. Finally, when the result was handed to me, I couldn't believe what I read. The test results came out negative for syphilis. It was negative for HEPA B. Most of all, it was negative for HIV. I was so overwhelmed. We were so happy and started crying and praising God for what He has done in my life. In spite of my sinfulness, He chose to be my healer. In spite of my doubt and unbelief, He chose to prove Himself powerful. In spite of my shame, He chose to lift me up from the filth I was in. In spite of who I was, great, He chose to do His miracle. I deserve, I know I deserve none of these, but I will forever be grateful to my God who has rescued me. And this is His name. He said, I am Jaime Gabrera, and God promised me in Jeremiah 29, 11, that He has great plans for me. He will not harm me. His plans are to give me hope in the future. Believe, this is what He's saying, believe He has the same for you. Today, I am a committed follower of Jesus, and I will give the rest of my life to bring Him honor and glory. God is a God of deliverance. Can we all stand? Let that truth sink in in our hearts as, as we start 2016. God is a deliverer. If Jaime was delivered by God from the lifestyle of homosexuality, and what's even better, he was delivered from HIV. And now Jaime is a disciple of Jesus, a real man of God, and is now ministering to homosexuals and discipling homosexuals to grow more in their relationship with God. I believe 2016 will not be a perfect year, but how many of you are in faith? We have a God who delivers. Jesus Christ. Let that be a reality. Let that be an encounter, an experience for us. Can we just lift our hands to God? Lord, as a sign of our lifting up our hands to you, you are a God who delivers. Nothing is impossible with you. Some of us, we still have doubts. In the name of Jesus, I erase those doubts. 
Some of us are still ashamed of you. In the name of Jesus, I will erase that shame. Because you never got ashamed of us. And so, Lord, I pray for every proud heart here, you would soften that heart in the name of Jesus. And 2016 would be a year of breakthrough for us. Whatever we're believing you for, nothing is impossible with you. Where nothing is impossible with you. Jesus, you are our deliverer. Some of us, we need to be delivered from our sins, from our sinful lifestyle. Deliver us from that. Some of us, we need to be delivered from, from, delivered from our addictions. Deliver us from that in the name of Jesus. This year would be a year where, where some of us are addicted to drugs. We will be set free from that, Lord. Some of us, we've been pressured in, by our peers. You will be set free from that, Lord. You are our deliverer. Let's just pray, Lord, we commit this 2016 to you. Thank you for the new year. Thank you for this new year. We're committing it to you, Lord. Whatever trials or situations we'll go through, we know we have someone, Lord, a deliverer that is fighting for us and fighting with us, Lord. And so may we always hold on to your word. And just like what this song says, may your presence be with us from this day up to the 31st of December of 2016, Lord. We want to live a life that's glorifying and honoring to you. Thank you, Lord God. We praise you. You are a good God. You are a faithful God. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen.